Hi guys, this is Bianca Moore. Welcome to the CVCS Chapels podcast. Today's message is from Principal Walker. Thank you, Bianca. And thanks to all of you for singing in that intro. Like, that was strong. It really gives us a good vibe to start off our chapel message, so thank you all so much. Uh, Happy Wednesday in our first full week, even though it's super weird with our schedule, uh, but excited to to have this chapel with you all. Um, I want to talk a little bit first in our theme. I'm going to start by talking about surfing, specifically uh, oh, and by the way, too, if you're interested in the surf club, there's a, a meeting at lunch today. Uh, you may or may not have seen that. So uh, head to the Nest for a surf club meeting. Um, my kids used to be sheepish around the ocean, uh, we're, which was a problem because we're a beach family. We go to the ocean a lot. That's what we do for fun. Um, but then what changed is they saw, uh, they actually made a friend at the beach and saw her jumping into the waves. She was a little bit older than them, and she would jump into the waves, under the waves, and just kind of play around. They're like, okay, that's fun. And then they had um, a friend then who showed them this can be done, and it's not scary, and it's fun. So they started to jump in and have some fun with that friend. And ever since then, they haven't really been sheepish around the ocean. And over the last year or so, they've each fallen in love with surfing. I've even had some fun with my daughter, Autumn. We've gone on a few dawn patrol sessions, waking up super early where I drag her out of bed and throw on a wetsuit and we go out to Doheny, and it's great times. Um, but they've, we've just, for a little bit more than a year now, I've been pushing them into waves, uh, and they went from like being shaky and just kind of hanging out on their bellies to sitting up and getting on their knees, and then they finally got to the point where they could stand up. And then just under a year ago, some point last fall, Uh, I have a friend who is an amazing surfer, and he had a big problem, though. His kids are the same age as my kids, and his kids did not want to surf. Like, no matter how hard he tried, they did not want to surf. Uh, So we went out to Doheny together one day, and we were just all barbecuing, and we had our surfboards. So we brought our kids out into the water together, and what do you know, when his kids saw my kids surfing, standing up on the boards, well, then they wanted to stand up and try to surf. Uh, So after watching my kids get pushed in the waves, his kids wanted to surf, they started standing up, they started laughing, and they started having fun. Um, And looking at how this all works, I have a couple of videos I want to show you of of my kids surfing, like some some embarrassing but proud dad moments here too. Um, This this first video that I want to show you, that's my daughter Juniper. Oh! So I, I push her into a wave, and she comes back. I'm stoked for her. I'm like, hey, how was that one? And she goes, good. I hit a girl. The girl is OK. It's just that, that, that uh, Costco foam top board. How many of you have that Costco foam top, the Jerry Lopez? Like, uh, I'm surprised it's not every hand in the room. Um, but yes, that's my daughter, Juniper, smacking somebody in the face. Uh, and then our next video, you'll see my son, Santiago, uh, seven years old. No, he's five years old. My daughter Juniper's seven. I can't even keep this straight. All the way in. Way to go, Santi, right? But one thing that I've been noticing as they've been surfing more and more, specifically on a day where the waves are kind of farther out, it's a bit of a further paddle, and you're at a beach like Doheny, and then you have kids who just ride the waves. What did you notice about Santiago, that last one? How, how far in did he go? All the way to the shore. So I push him into the wave, swim to shore, grab him, pull him back out, right? So the biggest challenge in teaching them to surf is just how exhausted I get. And if you ever go out surfing on a day when it's really big and you're catching a lot of waves, your back just gets shot and you're exhausted and your arms just kind of turn into noodles as you're trying to paddle around out there. And that's how I feel at the end of a long day with my kids in the water and then surfing all the way onto the sand and then I go all the way to the sand and then paddle them back out and then all the way to the sand. I have not 
been able to get my kids to start paddling, right? And even to start trying to paddle into the waves. Uh, and, and the girls, they're a little older. They're eight and seven. But Santiago, the youngest one, he would just be like, no, I'm not going to paddle. He just, I don't know if it scares him. I don't know what the deal is. But he doesn't even want to try to paddle. But then this last weekend, um, out with the, the same friends that uh, just under a year ago, the kids did not want to go surfing. We were out surfing with them. And Santi sees his friend, uh, who's a little bit older than him, who's now out on a shortboard, and he's just shredding, right? And then not only does he catch the waves, but then when he is off the wave, he jumps onto the board, and he paddles back out to his dad. I'm like, oh, that looks like heaven right there. Uh, so he paddles back out to his dad, and then catches a wave, and then paddles back out to his dad. Oh, he doesn't catch it. He's still getting pushed in, right? Um, well, wouldn't you know, I'm out there with Santiago, and before I know it, he starts saying, oh, dad, let go of the board. I want to paddle, right? Oh, dad, let go of the board. I want to paddle. He goes, dad, can I try to turn the board around and paddle into the wave by myself, right? So he sees his friend, and now he is stepping his game up and saying, okay, I want to try this. I want to do this. So let's follow this pattern, right? Rewinding. First, my kids are tentative around the ocean. My kids see a friend play in the ocean, and they follow that friend's example. My kids start to enjoy being pushed into the waves, and they start trying to stand up. Their friends see that example, and they start to enjoy it and follow that example, too. And then my kids don't want to paddle independently, but they see their friends start to do it, and they follow their example. Right? So there's also that reversal in roles there. So why am I telling that story? Our theme this year, if you, as you've heard, is follow and lead. And one thing that's been abundantly clear in my life, and especially seeing my kids grow up in these little moments, or let's be honest, for me, that's a big moment. Surfing with my kids is awesome. Um, but one thing that's been clear in watching them grow up is that all of us are followers, right? Every single one of us are followers. And we follow the examples of other people. We're all following different examples. So then the question is, if we are all followers, who are we following or what are we following and who are we becoming in that process, right? If I took my kids out surfing with somebody who is scared of the ocean, do you think they would want to surf more or less after? Less, right? Because if you're out with people who are like screaming and crying, is that fun? Like does that instill confidence in you, <laughs> right? If you are around other people and you're on campus and it's people who are just like bummed and negative and like, oh, this is terrible. Like, is that going to cause you to step your game up or is that going to bring your game down? Right? If you're out, uh, you know, football team, you got your game coming out, yesterday's a hot day, and if everybody's just whining about how hot it is and saying, I don't want to run hard today, are you going to run harder or not? Like, no. When I played college football, I thought that I was working harder than I possibly could have when I was hitting the weight room, when I was doing my sprints and all of my training in high school. I was working so hard, and I couldn't imagine possibly working harder, right? But then you end up around a bunch of other people who are taking things seriously just as seriously as you are, and even more seriously than you are, and you're looking around, you're saying, okay, I got a lot more to give here. I got a lot more that I can bring to us. So then you get around other people, and you see another example that you can follow, and you're like, ah, oh, I didn't think I can work any harder, but there's somebody who's figured out how to do that, and I'm going to step my game up and follow that example, right? So it's important for us to be aware, who are we following? What's our approach to this? Um, and then there's some self-awareness in that too of, are, are people following me? Are people looking to me too? But the idea is we are all following examples. We're exa following examples of people around us. We're following examples that are set in culture. Are we aware of it? Are we aware of how we're being shaped by the examples we're following? So if we want to live well, and if we want to live fully, if we want to love well, we have to be followers. My kids' journey towards surfing would have been very different, or at least a lot more challenging, if they didn't follow the example of a friend. And their friends needed an example to follow in learning how to surf, and in finding the courage to surf, and to find the joy in surfing. And my kids then needed an example from those same friends, so that they could um, have that, the friends set an example in order for them to take the next step forward in surfing so they're not just stagnant where they were. 
So what if we here are always setting an example for one another? And reflecting on that question, who are we following, what are we following, and who are we becoming as we follow? In my life so far, I'm discovering more and more that there is, are you ready for this? Where do you think this is leading to? Who, who or what are we following? Who or what do we want to follow? Who should we follow? Say it, Sunday school answer, everybody. Wow, I'm shocked that you got that. Yes, it is Jesus. I don't... Who or what are we following? We want to follow Jesus. I'm discovering more and more that there is joy and fullness of life in following Jesus. There's joy and fullness of life in following Jesus. It's not a set of rules to follow. It's an example to follow. He gave us an example to follow for fullness of life. When we talk about Sunday school answers and we talk about why Jesus came, we tend to go straight to like the death and resurrection of Jesus, which is super important, right? Like the most important thing. But little baby Jesus didn't just come to be crucified and die right away and then rise from the dead right away. And then you have a resurrected baby who took the sins of the world upon him, right? You had a man who lived and followed the model of what fullness of humanity looked like. Jesus gave us an example that shows us what humanity is supposed to look like. He shows us what humanity is supposed to look like as friends, as neighbors, as teachers, as students. In all things that we do, Jesus is that model. And the call for us to become more like Jesus, the goal is not to escape your humanity. Do you realize that? I grew up in a faith tradition where it was kind of wired into things that the goal was to escape humanity and the human existence that we have. Like, oh, I just can't wait till I get to heaven and that's about all that matters right? You follow Jesus and you accept Jesus so that you can get to heaven, and that's the most important thing. But it's so much more than that. Jesus doesn't just want you to go to heaven. He wants you to experience fullness of life and following after him with one another. He gave us that example to follow. The call for us is to become more like Jesus, and in becoming more like Jesus, we experience more life and fullness of life. And becoming like Jesus is found in Jesus through union with him and through the example he set, the model he set out for us to follow. In that religious environment I followed where punching the ticket to heaven was the goal, I became obsessed with having all the right answers about Jesus. I thought that being a Jesus expert was the goal, where I'd have the right answers in theology, that I would do great things, and that I would give God credit. As the football player that I was, it was like, oh, I'm going to be the best Christian ever, and then I'm going to win the Heisman Trophy, and then when I win the Heisman Trophy, I'm going to say, it's all about Jesus. And people are going to be like, wow, yes! And I'll be like, yeah, that's like the pinnacle of humanity. Do something great and say, it's all about Jesus. But it's so much more than that. It's not doing the right things. It's not having the right answers. It's experiencing fullness of life with Jesus and following his example that he gave to us. In the process of doing that, I realized that something was missing. Despite all of my knowledge and all the hard work that I committed to being, trying to be great at things, I wasn't loving others well. I wasn't experiencing the joy that comes from truly following Jesus. I was following a religion, but I was missing Jesus himself. This realization brought back to me the example of Jesus when he, that he set for us. In John 13, just before he was crucified, he washed his disciples' feet, and he asked them if they understood what he had done. And he explained that if he, their Lord and teacher, had washed their feet, that they should also wash one another's feet. He said, I have given you example, an example that you also should do just as I have done to you. Jesus wasn't telling them what to do. He was showing them through his actions how to live and how to love well. And then he says something so powerful. He says, if you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. It's not enough to know the right answers or to have a deep understanding of theology. The blessing comes when we live out what we know, when we follow Jesus' example of humble service and love. So as we reflect this year and go through Bible studies and chapels this year on the theme of follow and lead, let's remember that following Jesus isn't about becoming an expert on him. It's about becoming like him. It's about living out his teachings and the way we love, serve, and lead others. Just as my kids learn to surf by following the example of their friends, 
we learn to live fully by following Jesus' example set for us. Who we follow shapes who we become, and when we choose to follow Jesus, we're choosing a path that leads to true joy, purpose, and love. So let's commit together, not just to knowing about Jesus, but to truly follow him, allowing his example to transform us and guide the way that we lead others. Let's pray. God, we love you. Thank you that you love us. And thank you that the example that you set for us is one of fullness of life that leads to being fully present, that leads to fullness of joy and love through union with you. I pray that our hearts are drawn to you, to have union with you, that we'd set our eyes on you as examples to follow, and that you'd tune our eyes to see others who are following you well so that we can follow that example and be drawn closer to you too. Help us to step fully into life as we follow you, as we follow you together, and that we experience that life as individuals, but also together as a community. We love you, God. Thank you for your goodness again. Thank you for your love. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, what an incredible message. Thank you so much for sharing with us. Um, why don't you kind of tell us about yourself a little bit, like we know you already, but just anything that you want to tell us about yourself. Yeah, well, I am James Walker, and it's my fifth year here, so I've seen a full graduating class come through. Uh, and historically, we've had kind of this rhythm of chapels where the head of schools always kicks off with the chapel theme, uh, and then I take the second chapel of the year just talking about... Um, what the year might look like and my heart for our high school specifically during the year. Uh, so usually that tends to be a little bit more story-based and a little bit more personal. And initially I was thinking about telling a little bit about my testimony and what growing up in a Christian school looked like for me and pursuing high levels of academics and athletics, um, playing college football and discovering what it means to follow Jesus in the midst of that. Because um, I haven't really told that full story with this whole crew. Uh, so, uh, but in, in praying about it and, and reflecting on life and what's meaningful to me this weekend and surfing with my kids over the weekend and reflecting on that, I'm like, you know what? I think God wants us to make it a little bit more small and a little bit less about me and my story and discovering what it is to follow Jesus and more about um, what following is and um, specifically what following Jesus is like and also that there's joy in following after him. It's not just about follow him to get to heaven. Uh, mm -hmm. There's joy and fullness of life in following him. Yeah. Um, was there a specific moment this weekend when you were um, surfing with the kids? I know you were talking about um, how he ended up like not paddling and just, or not having you paddle and just paddling on his own. Was there any other like specific point where you're like, I think God wants me to talk about this and I think that these kids need to hear about this? Yeah, it was, it was a pretty immediate response in my head. Um, but when my son saw his friend Koa paddle past him, uh, and after I had just gotten in a little bit, not a fight with him, but he had gotten frustrated with me where I'm like, hey, bud, paddle to me. And he's like, no, I'm not going to. And then like two minutes later, he sees his friend paddle ba past us. And, uh, and he says to me, dad, let go of my board. <laughs> right? And just to see... He said it with a smile right after kind of kicking and screaming a little bit. Um, and he said it with confidence and like excitement that was in his voice there. And when I saw that, it, I saw literally in a moment him develop into a new person. Like mm -hmm. um, not a new person, but into mm -hmm. the next step of who he is and the next step of what surfing is. Uh, it was kind of a magical moment to see him change for the better right in front of my eyes. Mm -hmm. And in that moment, I'm like, yeah, it's it's something like this that God has for us to share, has for me to share. Yeah. Um, were you a, even a little bummed when your kid kind of didn't want you to paddle for him anymore? Like, I know you were talking about how you're like, oh, I'm so tired. Like, it's a lot of work to paddle for 
like my kid, but my mom personally says like you know, you don't realize how like much it means to you to be needed by your kids. So I just like I know it's kind of a deep question, but yeah. like did you ever feel that like oh my kid can do this on his own like he doesn't need me to help him that much anymore yeah i think um the short answer is no uh the longer answer is um it's been kind of a sentimental year for me Mm -hmm. um i think part of it in the last year um my mom has died Mm -hmm. um watching my kids grow up um watching even last year senior class graduate who i was with for four years Mm -hmm. just different reflections on me growing up and my kids growing up and what that means uh, my son started kindergarten yesterday mm-hmm. too, and I don't have any kids in, it, like all three of my kids are are in elementary school. So there's this, this longing of like, oh, my kids are outgrowing the baby mm-hmm. phase, and one day soon I'm not going to be carrying my kids to bed. Mm-hmm. Um, they're not going to want me to hold them. So I'm still trying to treasure those moments mm-hmm. uh, and enjoy that. But I think for something like surfing, like one, I'm always going to hug my kids and hold my kids. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to always carry them. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm kind of treasuring in my hearts the moments of them being small and treasuring that there's some things that are never going to end. But I'm also really enjoying seeing them have fun independently mm-hmm. and experience joy independently, um, where it's not um, – they're having fun through me, but they're having fun because they're doing things with me. Like they're doing things on their own with me. Mm -hmm. So for something like surfing, there's not like a sadness that comes along with that where there's the independence, but there was a ton of joy in me and saying, oh, he's doing it. Like Mm -hmm. he's stepping into it. Mm -hmm. Um, And I imagine, and I hope in as much as possible that me as a dad, my heart is aligned with God's heart Mm -hmm. for us Um, and that I can mirror what God's heart is for kids. And I think in that idea of following after Jesus and follow, um, I, I imagine that God experiences much joy in seeing us step more into the fullness of life too. Uh, so I, I hope and I kind of imagine um, that God's heart is like that and is just full of joy when he sees us independently experience fullness of life um, with him as we follow him. That's, that's really cool. That is incredible to hear. Um, it's really cool seeing like your perspective on family life, because like, I know you more as a principal Mm -hmm. and I know that you have kids and I know that you have a family, but I don't typically know that side of you. And it's really cool um, hearing about this and just hearing your perspective um, on like your kids and how they're growing up. And honestly, even um, like hearing about you talking about last year's graduating class, it's just, you were talking to them kind of how you were talking about your children Mm. And it's really, it's really cool seeing that and how you're kind of always like right behind us and like Mm. not, not like doing things for us, like you said, but like leading us. And that's kind of has to do with our, um, like whole theme this year, follow and lead and you're, um, like hope you know, you're doing a really good job with that. (laughs) Thank you. Um, on another note, is there anything specific, like if you could have one thing that you really want um, the students and even people listening to the podcast to take away from this, what would that be? Man, that's so hard. <laughs> um, and I don't want to say too many words because it's supposed to be brief, right? <laughs> <laughs> take your time. Take, use as many um, words as you want. Yeah, I think like following Jesus is so key. And... Um, the idea of knowing about Jesus and believing the right things about Jesus so captured my imagination as a younger Christian Mm -hmm. and coming to terms with what it means to follow Jesus and that it's all about, like, he was the perfect human. Mm -hmm. He experienced fullness of joy. He was fully present every moment. He fully loved well. Like, he did not just give us a set of things to believe so that we can go to heaven. He gave us a model of what living well looks like. Mm-hmm. And we can, f- we can literally follow him to become like him. Mm-hmm. So I guess all that preamble to my answer is like, follow Jesus. And following him leads to fullness of life mm-hmm. and fullness of joy. Um, so to really, en- I would encourage everybody to reflect on what following Jesus actually looks like mm-hmm. for them and what that actually means. Mm-hmm. That's really good. Well, thank you so much for your time. Thank Thank you you for speaking. 
Um, yeah, just great conversation. Great everything. Hopefully we'll have you back on that stage soon. Oh, I would love it. Mm -hmm. Thanks, B. Mm -hmm. This episode has been a production of the Capistrano Valley Christian Schools Podcast Network. Capistrano Valley Christian Schools is a Christian JK-12 school in San Juan Capistrano, California. Be sure to check out, subscribe to, and leave a review of this show and the other shows on our network on your podcast player of choice. Doing so supports the school community in a multitude of ways. For more information about the CVCS Podcast Network or any of our other shows, check out cvcs.org or email podcasts at cvcs.org. On behalf of the whole network, this is Mr. Jasper saying thank you again for listening and stay tuned for more.